Hi. In this video, we'll be looking at the stresses that acts on pre-stressed concrete beams. As we know, one of the main reasons for pre-stressing concrete beams is to avoid cracks appearing in the concrete beam when the day-to-day -day loading acts day-to-day -day load acts on the beam. So first we'll be looking at this serviceability load condition, the day-to-day -day load condition in the pre-stressed concrete beams and the stresses generated by the pre-stressing force plus the serviceability load conditions. The fundamental assumption that we will start with for analyzing the uncracked PC section is that the plane section before bending will remain plane after bending. That's a Bernoulli's principle. And this was the fundamental assumption that we made uh, for uh, the reinforced concrete section as well. So what it basically means is that the strain will be linear in the beam. And another assumption that we make is that uh, during during the serviceable load conditions, the concrete will uh, will behave linearly, uh, and this assumption is fairly okay because during the serviceable load conditions, uh, the concrete will be within the range of 0.5 FC dash, and in this region, as you can see here, the concrete is still be behaving linearly. So we are assuming that the linear performance of the concrete is valid, and the final assumption that we make is that. Uh, due to the external loads, there will not be any change in the magnitude of the pre-stressing force. In other words, the pre-stressing force in the tendons are not affected by the external load. So we'll, we'll start our analysis with this fundamental assumptions. Now first let's look into the concentric tendons in which the pre-stressing tendencies align along the centroidal axis of the beam. As you can see here, the pre-stressing tendon is exactly at the centroidal axis. So the pre-stressing force that the tendons will apply will be exactly at the centroidal point of the beam. So the pre-stressing force P is acting at the centroid of the beam. What it means is that this force will create uh, uniform axial stresses in the beam. So it will create uniform axial stress which is given by the pre-stressing force P over uh, the gross cross-sectional area AZ of the concrete beam. Now say the external live load acts on the beam. So this is the live load and we already have a uniform pre-stressing force pre-stressing uh, uniform axial stress caused by the pre-stressing force plus uh, there will be a bending stress or the normal stress caused by the uh, caused by the uh, this is caused by the dead load and also there will be bending stress caused by the live load as well so this is in tension, tension, compression, compression, and this is in axial compression as well. So the overall effect will be that this compressive stress due to pre-stressing will try to nullify these tensile stresses. So your overall picture will look something like this. So there might be small tensile stresses remaining here. But this will be within the... Uh, the tensile strength of the concrete so there will not be any cracks here but as you can see here there is a large compressive stress acting at the top because all of these stresses will add up and all of them are compressive stress there so there will be a large compressive stress at the top and there might be a small tensile stress at the bottom or uh, there might be still small compressive stress at the bottom as well so again here we are trying to avoid the tensile stresses at the bottom but as you might have noticed here, yes, it is effective to reduce the tensile stresses at the bottom due to this concentric uh, pre-stressing force. But as you also might have noticed is that in the compression side, 
uh, all of these actual four Excel stresses are adding up. So we have unnecessary Excel stresses at the top. Um, so we, we do not actually need this actual stress at the top. So uh, it is not exactly efficient way of pre-stressing. So to avoid that one, what we can do is uh, we can we can put the pre-stressing tendon eccentrically. That means, uh, say, as you can see here, the pre-stressing tendons can be aligned at an eccentricity of E. So, so there, there is an eccentricity of E from the centroidal axis. So in this case, as you can see here, the, for the section A, the, there will be, of course, the, the axial force P, plus apart from the axial force, due to the eccentricity, as we did in the column, there will be a moment M acting on, on the beam as well. So there will be axial force, plus there will be a moment equals to the axial force P multiplied by the eccentricity E. So now the axial force P will create the uniform axial stress as before, P over AZ, the axial force over the gross cross sectional area. And apart from that one, the moment PE will create bending stress again. So the, the bending stress created by this moment will be the moment divided by the section modulus at the top and the bottom. So only difference is that this moment is acting in the opposite direction. That means there will be tension at the top and there will be compression at the bottom. So there will be compression at the bottom and tension at the top. Now so the overall um, effect of this condition is that at yeah, the bottom we'll have a large compressive stress due to the axial stress plus the bending stress, the positive bending stress there. And at the top, we'll have, we might have a small tensile stress or a small compressive stress. Right now, this is the stress condition that we will get by the eccentric arrangement of the pre-stressing tendon. As we can see here, it is more efficient than uh, having the pre-stressing wire right at the center because as we can see in this condition, we have a large compressive stress at the bottom, which is where the uh, the tensile stress will come from uh, the external loading. Now, if the external loading acts in this beam with eccentric pre-stressing tendon, let's see how the stress condition will look like. So, so again, uh, from the eccentric loading, we will have force P and the moment PE at the center. And so, so from the pre-stressing along, the stress condition is that we'll have the axial stress due to the force P at the centroid, plus due to the moment, we'll have bending stress with PE over ZP compression at the bottom and tension at the top. Now, due to the um, dead load of the beam, we will have bending stresses as well, which will have negative stress at the bottom and the positive stress at the top, compressive stress at the top. Uh, again, is, which is given by the moment divided by the section modulus will give you the stresses conditions. And similarly, due to the external live load, we will have tension at the bottom and compression at the top. So combining all these four stress conditions, the equivalence, the, the final stress condition will look like this one. So this part is due to the pre-stressing. And again, at the top, this part is due to the pre-stressing. And the remaining part is due to, and this remaining part is due to the external loading. As you can see here, this is more efficient way of pre-stressing as because uh, we will have large amount of compressive stress at the bottom to counteract these tensile stresses. And we will not have unnecessary compressive stress at the top. So we won't have any large compressive stress at the top. So this is more efficient than using um, eccentric pre-stressing tendon. So one more thing to note here is that uh, for the simply support beam, say, the moment at these points, the moment at the supports is actually zero and the moment is maximum at the center. So, so the most effective way will be to have more eccentricity at the center. So having the last eccentricity at the center and we can have zero eccentricity at the supports. 
because we do not have any bending moment so there is no tensile stresses at the bottom as well so instead of having a uniform eccentric tendon uh, for the pre-stressing concrete beam what we can do is we can arrange the pre-stressing tendon in a core profile as you can see in the next slide and now here so the most effective way of pre-stressing would be to have maximum eccentricity at the mid span where the tensile stresses are uh, at the bottom of the fiber is maximum and at the supports where there is no bending moment and no tensile stresses at the bottom we do not need any eccentricity so there the profile can be a curve or pro parabolic profile as shown here and the piece stressing force will act along the um, the tendon so this would be more effective than having the eccentric and the uniform eccentric pre-stressing tendon or having the concent concentrated pre-stressing tendon. As you can see here, this line is the center of gravity for concrete and this line is the center of gravity for your steel. So you might have noticed here that uh, we are arranging the most, we are arranging the pre-stressing tendon exactly as the bending moment shape of the beam. So for the simply supported beam, your bending moment shape is exactly like the like this one. So the most efficient way of arranging the pre-stressing tendon is to arrange, arrange it exactly as the bending moment shape of the beam. Now, for example, for the internal pre-stressing, as we can see here, the center of gravity. So this is a box girder beam, box girder breeze section. As you can, this uh, this is concrete and this whole area is the um, hollow section here. The center of gravity for your concrete is somewhere here. So if we provide your pre-stressing tendon here and here, that means you are you are gaining an eccentricity of E1, so which is which will make it the beam more efficient. Now, as we talked in the first video, uh, to make it easier to inspect and construct, we often make these pre-stressing tendons outside the concrete section and inside this. Um, uh, the hollow part of the box girder bridge. So, yeah. So if we have this external pre-stressing tendons within the section of the beam, as you can see here, the eccentricity E2 is smaller than your uh, than your pre uh, than your uh, first condition in internal pre-stressing. So, so the external pre-stressing having the pre-stressing tendon within the section of the beam is less eff effective than the first one. So the solution would be that we use highly eccentric external pre-stressing tendons. That means we will use, we'll still use the external pre-stressing tendon, but we will keep it highly eccentric. So instead of having pre-stressing tendon within the cross section here, we will have the pre-stressing tendon highly eccentric and outside the uh, cross section of the column uh, of the box girder breeze. So in this way, we can have a large eccentricity wherever it, we require it. So high eccentric external pre-stressing is quite effective because we have we can achieve a high eccentricity. Now this is a picture of ordinary external tendon. So as you can see here at the support where there is a negative bending moment, uh, you have we are having pre-stressing tendon arranged like this one, and at the mid span where there is a positive bending moment, your uh, pre-stressing tendon is also coming at the bottom. So here the, there is an eccentricity but limited. But for the high eccentric external tendons, the external tendons will be out of the section itself, concrete section itself. So the tendons is arranged like this one. So you can achieve a very high amount of eccentricity here. So the eccentricity is quite large in for the um, for the external pre-stressing and and when you are doing the highly centric external tendon you can reduce the cross section of the beam, beam as well so again uh, we arrange the external tendons just according to the bending moment shape and for this continuous beam your bending moment uh, diagram will look like this one so the positive, positive bending moment here, negative bending moment at these regions, and your it is efficient to arrange your uh, pre-stressing tendons just exactly as the 
uh, your bending moment profile as well. So, so this would be the more efficient way of arranging your pre-stressing tendon. So this will, uh, the external pre-stressing tendon and the highly eccentric external tendons will result in the lightweight structure due to the reduction of the girder height. So we don't have to put the pre-stressing tendon inside so we can make the girder uh, um, slimmer. And it is more effective use of the material and it has more flexibility in design to suit various site conditions as well. And this is an example of uh, ex highly eccentric external tendons and it is a breeze uh, from Hokkaido in Japan. It's called as a bokeh breeze. And you can see these, uh, these are the external pre-stressing tendon in the breeze. So this is the mid support here. And there will be a negative moment at the mid support and at the, at the middle span of the two span breezes, uh, two spans, we will have a positive bending moment. So you can see that the, the, the pre-stressing wires are arranged according to the bending moment shape of the breeze. And this is the construction stage of the breeze. Um, at, the, at the mid support, you can see that the pre-stressing tendons are arranged inside the concrete uh, fin and then are cast. The concrete is cast and you can see the tensioning of the tendons and anchor is here. And at the mid span where there is a positive bending moment, um, we have this external, uh, highly centric uh, external pre-stressing arrays using a double tubular type deviator. So these deviators will help to keep the external pre-stressing tendons there in place. So these are some other examples of highly centric pre-stressing um, pre in the pre breezes. As you can see here, in this simply supported beam again, your highly centric pre-stressing pre wires are kept exactly as the bending moment shape. And for, for the breeze in Switzerland here, you can see these are, there, will, there are pre-stressing wires running along these concrete fins. And uh, the architecture chose this profile because he thought that this profile matches well with the mountainous terrain in the Switzerland. So with the external pre-stressing, you can achieve a various design and very beautiful design in the breeze construction as well.